Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on the gratitude interview or podcast interview, rather, regarding the pandemic. And as I was thinking about this special guest with special emphasis on the word special about how many years I've known this young lady that goes back quite a few years when we were both working for a uh, uh, let's just say a retail outlet. We won't say anything more than that where we met and I've been impressed with her energy ever since. I've been trying to keep up with her ever since then. Lena Zenadine. Lena, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. You bet. So I mentioned just a little bit earlier that I'm trying to help people that maybe don't have some of the drive and imagination and type of things that some of us are blessed with. And you're certainly one of those examples. So first question, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic and this madness that we're in now about our sixth or seventh week, I think, what has been working best for you to kind of plow your way through this? Um, I would say the main thing, honestly, that I focused is everything that I was, I look at my body as like my temple. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like everything I was intaking, whether it was my thoughts, my food, how I was treating my body during this time, because mm -hmm. I found that happy, you know, happy body, happy mind. Right. Um, and that includes everything from what kind of food I've been eating, what time I've been eating, how I've been eating, um, you know, for example, eating slow, eating fast, uh, and taking a bunch of sugars because I'm just hungry or actually putting together meals. Um, and then honestly, just 20 minutes of exercise, like five times a week, instead of making some massive goal that's going to overwhelm me, just very, very, very small basics, starting with that to create some good habits. I must say, I've heard a lot about exercise too. And it's just, I just went out for about a four or five mile walk and it's all through the forest over where I live. And gosh, that's so important. And people have mentioned that too in the past about, I know it's social distancing and so forth, but gosh, if you can get out of your house or condo or what have you too. So, so next question, if you, I'm of course the gratitude guy, that's all I talk about and push and, and uh, tell people how important it is to have that as a mindset. Did you notice since this has happened, what you're grateful for, has it changed for what you're grateful for today versus say six or seven weeks ago? Um, well, I, I mean, you know, you and I have obviously known each other since I was in my teens. And so you've always been someone that's taught me about gratitude. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I've always woken up and went to sleep with is a feeling of, of seeing that the cup is half full, not half empty. Right. Um, the one thing though, that I definitely feel the most grateful for right now, I would say is, is, uh, is having my family. Oh, sure. Having my family just a few minutes away, all of them, from you know my parents' house to my brother's house to my sister's house, and all of the nieces and nephews, and all of us choosing to quarantine our own, in our own houses for you know one to two weeks. Once we both we all realized we were set, and we would all just meet at my parents' house, and that's it. And no one is doing anything, going anywhere, and nothing except for just in that specific area. And that made me feel very grateful because it made me realize. Well, A, what matters, right? Sure. Um, and B, I haven't felt that feeling of, of, uh, of loneliness or, 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 or feeling like, oh, what am I going to do today? Worst case scenario, I just jump up, even, even if it's not really doing much, but just going and taking a nap on my parents' couch, which I literally go and do. I'm like, instead right. of taking a nap here, I'll go to, you know, so just feeling gr grateful for having my family around. It's been a really, really, really huge part of it. Um, and technology. Oh, recognizing gosh. that we're in a world of technology. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, just the, these these intelligent people around the world that have created these, you know, Zoom and WhatsApp and all of these things that you're being able to be in touch with people all over the world, right? And um, and be there for them. Although it is through technology, it's not actual face FaceTime interaction, but it's still something to be able to push along and, and help each other. Yeah, it's really true. And it even feels like looking at you, depending on the view that I have, it could feel like we're almost sitting at Starbucks at cost with a cup of coffee. And all you just have to bring your own coffee, of course, <laughs> as you did. Exactly. <laughs> okay. No travel involved, you know, no waiting in line at Starbucks. But, you know, you mentioned something else. Connor, my younger son, has a couple of friends. Who have, I've become very close friends with them as well. And they're from a Greece, uh, Greek family. And I oh. think whether it's Greek or whether it's Lebanese or whatever it might be, I mean, gosh, sometimes 
I think our country's missed out on how you be a family. Because I see some of the culture in your family and in Peter and George's family, the Saradakis is down in San Diego, and they're so loving and warm. And there's just a tightness and a connection that, and I'm sure families have it here, but gosh, there's certain cultures where it's even more inbred, I think, to be so close, and especially at a time like this. So I always yeah. know what your family's meant to you and, and the Kamals of the world and everybody is just is so important. So, so speaking of you and speaking of being somebody who's always taken on a ton of, uh, uh, looked at new opportunities and had a lot of balls to juggle and that kind of thing. Any thoughts or ideas or tips or what you might advise somebody that's kind of stuck in their condo or stuck in their house or, uh, you know, townhouse, condo, whatever it might be that they could maybe be doing right now where they're kind of home bound, if you will? Well, I think it all depends on, I mean, there's different ways to look at it, right? We have so many different, everyone has a different personality. Mm -hmm. So one person might find something that works for them. It might not work for the other person. Right. I can, specific, I can specifically speak for myself. Um, I personally am someone, as you know, has always been a go-getter, all about business and working and, um, and, and you know, career, 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 all of that stuff. And I've had a pretty fast life when it came to that. Right. The thing that I personally have been focusing on is stepping back and learning about myself in a completely different aspect. I mean, I mm. turned 34 this year wow. and I, you know, from the age of when I met you, at, you know, 18, 19 until about, you know, just a few weeks ago, it's always been work, work, work. Again, not as much time with family, um, business plans, finances, just always been that, you know, what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next on a more, I don't want to say material, but really it is more, more mm -hmm. of that, that lifestyle. Um, one thing that I personally have been stepping back on is, is going, okay, well, what's something that you haven't tried in your life before? Mm. And for mm -hmm. me, it's slowing down. Oh, interesting. I like that. Yeah. Um, and that's something I learned through yoga. You know, you do all your poses in yoga and then they say Savasana, which is where you lay back mm -hmm. and just lay on your back and you close your eyes and you breathe. And they say, this is an actual pose, which wow. tells you. It's one of the hardest poses, actually, from what I hear with yoga, because you just can't move. You just lay there. Right. You know, and I realize in the world that we live in with social media, technology, marketing, you know, everywhere you go, someone's trying to sell you something, whether it's on a billboard or your cell phone or coffee, whatever. Um, our minds are always moving, 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 mm -hmm. moving. And it's always what's the next best thing or what's the next um, opportunity or what's the next, you know, a way that I can build my career or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of started to look more inwards and go, okay, how can I slow it down a little bit and kind of look at things from there? Um, I personally have been working on that and I've been, That's I've been goodness. working in the transition of, you know, you go through different transitions as a young woman, as a young man, whatever, through your whole life. I've been focusing on this next transition of life. Of, okay. What does life look like after you build your career, after you build this, after, you know, is it family? Um, is it, um, you know, whatever. So for me, what I've been doing, I've been reading a lot more than usual. Great, great. Um, and the, the book I've been reading, um, I can share it with you, actually. It's, it's, where is it? Oh, it's in my room. Um, it's about creating habits hmm. and uh, habits of success or something like that is what it's called. And it, it, you know, because we were in quarantine, we're going to probably be more than now for right. 30 days. I was like, okay, well, this is the perfect way to create a habit. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been focusing on creating habits. Like I talked about exercise. Um, I used to work out so much. Right. And so it got kind of overwhelming though. As you get older, your priorities change, your body changes, your mind changes, your knees, your back, everything goes a little different. So it was like, okay, don't get overwhelmed by saying, I'm going to lose this much weight or I'm going to, no. I told myself, you know what? Just go for a walk every day for 20, just do something physically yeah. active for 20 minutes a day. So for example, I started with that. And then from there, I've progressed into doing so much more, but just that little amount has made me now get up, start a specific routine, even before my breakfast uh, such as, you know, making my bed as, you know, just as easily as you brush your teeth. So kind of working on small wins, I guess is what they call them, right? 
yeah. instead of overwhelming yourself because that's what we do all the time we overwhelm ourselves in the big world with all these big pictures big things i want to buy a house i want to do this whatever it is that your goal is i want to get this promotion i want to save money i want to and, well, it's, and i think that's know. that's such a great observation because i think kind of the antithesis of what you're talking about is the multitasker can you do 19 things at once and can i do this and as you say it's the big house and everybody cries oh oh you think you're busy i'm twice as busy as you are i get that all the time from people that's nothing i'm leaving for here i'm taking off there and buying this and so forth so the, my follow-up question on that because this is really interesting to me knowing you as well as i do and i think it's pretty well did you have was there sort of a turning point or did something kind of snap your fingers or all of a sudden make you all of a sudden realize gosh rome wasn't built in a day i don't have to be because you've always been at kind of a breakneck pace and going yeah. and doing things and it's the shoe business it's working here and it's doing this and doing these jobs and work down this and doing the fragrance thing and, and no matter what it was was there something that happened or was it more sort of a gradual shift because just hearing you say this today is i think is really cool and again knowing you as well as i do about really stepping back and saying i, I think i need to, to take a little less less intense look at all this so did yeah. something happen that made you switch kind of well yeah, I would say two two things happen. Number one is I recognized I'm a really good failure. Hmm. I'm really good at failing. I'm really good at saying I want to do something and actually not doing it to the top prior to the top that I wanted to. Right. And that and I say I'm a good failure and that it's something I'm proud of because I'm able to that is kind of what I, I was, you know, building, building, I created the business, I closed I was just so many things that I just kept and I realized I would create this goal work myself to the bone mm -hmm. and then I would still feel like well that's not enough I want more I want more well with that I still kept feeling like I was and I don't know if failure is a hard word to use but right. really I felt like I didn't I didn't accomplish exactly what I wanted therefore in my mind I failed and I was like well I'm actually really good at this because when I was down you know on my knees I'm able to get up brush my legs off and go wait a minute well what did you set yourself up for um, for small wins or big wins. Again, we go back to that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the second thing is um, I was blessed with meeting an individual uh, before the quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, I was blessed with meeting this gentleman who is now my partner, who taught me after seeing his life and seeing, you know, because he's from the Middle East, he's gone through the wars, he went through the, um, the, the, you know, you're saving and then you put all your money in the bank and the government takes it, like just all of this crazy third world stuff that we don't really see here in the United States. Right. And then watching him and meeting him, I would have, you know, I'm like, wow, this guy's done so much. Like, this is amazing. But then when he tells me his story, I'm like, wow. Right. Had I gone through the experiences that you've gone, I would have lost my mind. Mm. Um, but instead, he's just, Keep such a cool, positive attitude, which has wow. kind of made me recognize, okay, Lena, you know what? Step back just a little bit and kind of start to look at things a little differently because it's not just about um, setting these massive goals. It's, it's about rebuilding, constantly building your foundation and your foundation is yourself, exactly. which is where this whole thing about healthy body, healthy mind, what kind of thoughts are going through my head, what kind of food am I eating, you know? Mm -hmm. um, little things like that that really really do change your emotional uh, po point of view when you're looking at things um you know and then just have you have a different mindset that's excellent that's really good so last question and again i go back to the amount of time i've known you but 34 years old and been on the planet uh, this number of years you have sort of whether i would call it a quote or a mantra or maybe a saying or maybe something that kind of represents your overarching approach to your life and maybe me now getting through something like this this has been six or seven weeks something that's kind of gee david here's my philosophy that i kind of use to guide me do you have anything like that that kind of sets you in the right direction um i do it's actually a really interesting sentence <laughs> that i tell myself a lot um i always i and this is and i'd have to explain what i mean by this but i say even roses have thorns mm, okay which in my mind, something is beautiful as a rose, right? And you smell it and all of that um, has an ending to it and can also prick you, yeah. but it doesn't yeah. stop people from going out and growing roses and purchasing roses mm, and loving like roses. Yeah, I like that. And so that's the way, so that kind of takes you to life. 
life is going to have its pros and cons all the time. Um, and, and your, your, your biggest defeats and your biggest losses will teach you actually the most because it'll get you to no pay question. attention more no and question. it'll calm down that ego. And then you can celebrate the wins, which is the, the, the beauty and the visual and the scent of the rose. No question. Yeah. Excellent stuff. And you know, it's interesting. Another version of that that I will say too is you can't appreciate up until you've seen down. And I think your most lessons come from the down stuff, the things that you really can take, uh, take a lot of solace in and know that you're learning something all the time. And in fact, it was interesting that who was it that said too, you can't learn anything when you're talking. And if you're asking questions and listening to people and you have some tremendous things you can learn. So, well, yeah. just as I suspected, just as I suspected some tremendous nuggets from Miss Dana Deans. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for being part of the podcast. Of course. Thank you for having me, David. I really appreciate it. You bet. You bet. Take All care. Right. Have a good day. Bye-bye.